and I divided it in two pieces. One piece is just to talk about my company here in Bulgaria, and the second part will be about entrepreneurship. You're busy with programming, so I'm not sure if you're interested in the subject entrepreneurship, but if you want to work in a company where you are requested to show some entrepreneurship, or if you want to start your own company, maybe it can be useful. Okay, first, quickly about myself. Welcome. <laughs> you think I don't know this guy, so I'm in the wrong room. But <laughs> <laughs> about myself, Fred Westenberg, uh, 51 years old, three children, have a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice one, by the way. Hungarian. I was elected in uh, 2009 as Entrepreneur of the Year in Holland. Uh, I have two, two companies. The top one, Ingenieurs for Westenberg. I was not so creative, so I gave it my own name. Very boring. Um, and what we do is something that has nothing to do with uh, programming and IT. Uh, we are civil engineers. And I'm a civil engineer. I'm just a simple engineer. I don't know anything about these complex things that you are doing here. Uh, that's why I have Peter. Peter takes care of that. Um, um, that is the, uh, the second company of me, that is uh, IT firm. We have a, a Dutch base and we have a, a Bulgarian base. By the way, I'm from Holland. <laughs> Maybe this is a conclusion that you already came to. Okay, IT firm. Here I put uh, all the uh, employees on a small sheet and um, we are just a relatively small uh, company. I used to work uh, for uh, in Bulgaria with a very small company and this is since 2000, oh it's not here, uh, I am already 14 years in Bulgarian, still not speaking the language very well, sorry for that. Um, so many years I was with a very small company and we were just uh, messing around and not really uh, able to, to make it grow. Since the 1st of January 2011 I do this with a partner of mine, you see him there, Robert, and together we are shareholders of uh, IT firm. Again, pretty small company. On the left side you see IT firm BV. BV stands for Homo Day written in Dutch. And in Bulgaria we have IT firm Homo oh, Day. Um, here you see the employees. Mainly, most of them are uh, programmers. Maria is the uh, office uh, assistant. And we have a, uh, at this moment we have one vacancy for a junior uh, web, uh, web developer. Our yeah, mission statement, maybe you can call it a mission statement, is what you see up there. We want to be the best in what we do. We want to have fun in what we do. This is even more important for me, I think. And we want to grow as professionals and as, uh, as persons and as a company. And the last thing, this is what I see in most Bulgarian companies, I don't see that enough. We expect our people that come to work for our company that they grow and that they develop themselves and that they become better persons and better professionals. Like I said, German dynamic, average age of our company, I'm the old one here, but <laughs> average age is something like 28, 29, so relatively young people. Um, lots of dynamics going on. We work, uh, one programmer uh, works on, uh, on projects for every four weeks and then uh, we switch to a new, uh, a new project. Um, our philosophy is a little bit, uh, the culture within the company is, uh, you can be explained with the keywords over there. Actually we are really like a no bullshit company. Uh, all these stories that you hear in Bulgaria about uh, the company does not have any salary, uh, money to pay salaries like this, that's not the problem of the employees, that's the problem of the company. So uh, we will work on, base, uh, on the basis of uh, to be honest and to, to be open and transparent to each other. And uh, yeah, we, we uh, expect uh, the, people, the people, the employees to be like that and to communicate with, uh, with us as a management like this. I just want to go through a few projects with you that, uh, that we did uh, quite recently. ChrisPlanner.nl is a site for uh, Fishers, fishermen in Holland, it's quite a complex site. Peter has been programming quite a few hours in this. And with Nana, especially the API was quite, uh, quite a lot of work. 
Thanks, special science. If you have time, maybe you should take a look. The World Trade Center in Holland, uh, who is it, uh, organizing all kinds of expositions. Uh, we made quite a big site for this, with eight subsites, as you can see over here. Um, and here you see an example of uh, six of these uh, sub uh, subsites. If you want to go on a safari, we can also help you with this. Um, Cross-media dashboard is uh, very interesting for gathering information for visitors and, and email addresses that you can uh, sell again to, uh, to other companies, of course. <coughs> <coughs> if you want to have the artificial grass in your uh, backyard, very convenient, by the way, I have it also. Uh, then uh, this webshop can, uh, can help you a bit further. Special from this one is that um, you can design your own, your own uh, grass, piece of grass, and you get a exact uh, offer from the company immediately online. This is uh, a project that we are doing for my own engineering company. Um, and we have quite a big uh, segment of the market in Holland for, uh, for, for bridges, smoothies, uh, all kinds of uh, infrastructural objects. So municipalities or provinces can put all their information in this site and it's possible to keep track of the quality of a bridge, uh, how much money they will have to spend next year, etc. etc. Uh, this is one about uh, European uh, Championship football, so you can uh, put your uh, something like yeah, gambling, I don't know, but <laughs> you can put uh, the score of a match over here, and I think you can win some prizes with it. Huh? Yeah, that's what, uh, uh, if you want to go on a holiday and you want to keep your checklist, this is also a very nice one. Um, this is something like an auction, but then the other way around. So the price is relatively high, it lowers, and as soon as somebody thinks, well, no, I want to have it for this price, then you say, it's mine. So it's not going, the price is going from low up, but the price is going from up low. Um, this is for a uh, automotive website for selling used cars. This is about, about right, it's also very interesting, this is also very complex. Uh, complex site. Heat pumps is something that is quite popular in Holland. Uh, it can reduce your uh, electricity bill for heating the house. And this uh, system can calculate uh, which heat pump you need. So these all look like very simple websites. Like um, uh, somebody who provides something is pushing it on the internet. But behind these websites is a lot of calculation that is being done that is the interesting part, I think, especially for a programmer. It's not just a simple website where you can ask for information. Right. Uh, Magento is also uh, something that we use quite a lot in web, uh, web stores. This is a gun shop, international. Dutch, Dutch gun shop is uh, working internationally. Okay. This is about uh, IT firm. Try to make it clear to you what we do, what we stand for, and which projects we have been doing uh, quite recently. We still have a vacancy for a junior programmer at this very moment, so if you would be interested, you can send your uh, resume and uh, the reason why you would like to work in our company, you can send it to, uh, to Peter and uh, you see his email address uh, over there. Questions? Anybody? No? No. Okay. Now we're going to talk about entrepreneurship. I have to warn you. This is, uh, I have uh, providing three lessons uh, in the past in the Varna Economic University. 
I have also been teaching at Blagovgrad uh, University about entrepreneurship. Um, I was quite puzzled uh, yesterday when I was preparing myself for this presentation about, okay, what I'm going to do. The other uh, universities, there were three lessons. So I just put them, copy and paste them after each other, and I have a very long presentation. But I think there are very intelligent people here in this room, so I'm sure that you can understand everything that I want to tell you. Um, so I, I, want, I was not sure, shall I leave some sheets out? Shall I tell the whole story to you? I decided the last thing, so which means that I have to talk very fast, and you are going to listen very fast. Um, don't make notes. Uh, it's useless to make notes. I will send the, if you want, and you are interested in uh, the sheets, then I will give you, uh, I will send them to you by, uh, by email. I see that there are even recordings made uh, for video. I have this one switched on also, so I'm not sure what is the quality of uh, the bullshit that I'm talking here, if it is recorded on the telephone. But if you are interested in the subject and you would like to have the, the sheets and you would like to have the recordings, then you will have to send me an email and I will send you the information. So I prefer that you just that you just participate, and if you have questions, please ask. Uh, don't bury yourself in a notebook and, and write down things, uh, because the sheets and the recording, as I said, will come later. Not a problem. Ah, this one is already all used. Entrepreneurship. What is entrepreneurship? Anybody? I know. Come on. No idea. Sorry? No idea. No idea. Oh. Somebody does have an idea? What was the Bulgarian word again? Premachos. 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 Come on, guys and girls. <laughs> Nobody? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, Actually, I try to summarize what is life all about. Creating value, taking calculated risk, then listening to your heart and realizing your aspiration. Actually, entrepreneurship is nothing different than this. I have to be... Uh... Okay. You didn't put it the first? The first is fine. Oh, no, it's not here. Yeah. The other one. Can you please uh, put your telephones to silence? And, uh... Okay, entrepreneurship uh, is not so different than normal life. Um, are entrepreneurs unique? Who is an entrepreneur? Does somebody here, uh, quite often we have applicants that already have their own company. In IT business it's quite common. Does anybody here have their own company? Ah, entrepreneur. Colleague. <laughs> Something else? Somebody else? Freeze. Sorry? Freeze. Not work. Cold. Cold. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's make it warm again after this presentation, maybe. Uh, are entrepreneurs unique? Well, there are lots of uh, examples, of course, of entrepreneurs. Uh, you see uh, Mr. Tax. Taxi from uh, Mittal and uh, from Virgin, what's his name? Uh, these, especially the left and the right, are uh, familiar for your work, I think. Uh, there are also some smaller examples, but with big uh, consequences. A guy, 13 years old, has his own, uh, he plays computer games and he made something that uh, teaches children about, about chemistry. This one, I think I heard it before. <laughs> Everybody knows him, of course. He did quite well, I think. Although, this one sold garbage. Even selling bullshit is uh, paying off sometimes. This one, uh, CEO of a big, uh, big bank. Somebody who saves lives with uh, nanotechnology and microfluids. Micro and somebody don't, some don't know what to do, and then they come to the Technical University in Um Another question, so 
Are entrepreneurs unique? I think not. Everybody can be an entrepreneur. You see woman, man, uh, old man, uh, young child. In principle, everybody can be an entrepreneur. Lots of research has been going on about uh, how to characterize, characterize now a successful entrepreneur. And there are many people who start their own business and it dies after a few weeks, a few months, a few years. And lots of research has been done. Here you see some, uh, I'll say this in English, things that you, and you have to have flair in order to be an entrepreneur, apparently. Another sheet, all kinds of things. This one is uh, really uh, something that, that I like very much. Intuitive decision making. Thinking. Uh, hard workers, I think that's something that I recognize myself in. And uh, love what they do is very important, I think. This is also what I would like to give to you today. That if you want to, if you consider to start your own company, it's very important that you love what you do, that you have passion for what you do. If you don't have, don't start your own company. Um, especially now in these times, quite often people come to me and say, uh, I lost my job, or there is a chance that I will lose my job, and I have a brilliant idea, and I want to start my own company. What do you think? Should I start my own company? Then most, most of the times I advise them not to. If I go back to when I started my own company, I remember that I had an idea, I wanted to start an engineering company, and I couldn't sleep. In the middle of the night, at 2 o'clock at night, I get out of bed and I was making a logo or something stupid like this, for example. Or I had another idea that I wanted to do in this company, so I get out of bed and I started making my business plan and, and shit like that. So if you don't feel this drive, and if you don't feel itchy and you want to do things like this, but you do it because you have no alternative, and you lose your job or whatever, don't start your own company. It's very risky. You should not underestimate the efforts that it takes to make a company successful. Okay, but here, uh, from some research, it shows that you should have at least a few of these things in order to start a successful company. Are entrepreneurs rich? Rich people. Few buttons. Well, generally speaking, entrepreneurs can gather uh, quite a lot of money. But it's only for a few. Yeah, we have seen Mark Zuckerberg. Um, so not so many people are, are really very wealthy. But if you look at all these figures, then you can make come to the conclusion that uh, some people inherit their money, but especially the top line makes it clear that 84% uh, of America's uh, millionaires were entrepreneurs. You see also that not so many people get their money from the previous generation. Most of them earn it themselves. And they did, do, did it by uh, starting as an entrepreneur, starting their own business. What characterizes millionaires, or at least entrepreneurs that become millionaires, is quite often that you don't see it from the outside. And the, the really successful ones, they drive a modest car. And I've seen many examples of uh, people who start their own, uh, own company. They go to the bank and say, I want 100,000 lever, or euro, whatever. And then they think, this Mercedes, the price was 75,000, so then I still have 25,000 to do <laughs> start my company. This is not, this, such a business will fail within the year. I can predict you this. So most of the entrepreneurs that do well don't do it for the money. This is not the reason why you should start your own company. You should do it because you want to, because you have an inner drive, because you get out of bed in the middle of the night and feel itchy about things. Rarely in a sexy business. So here again you see, they, uh, they made their money doing what they like. That is the most important thing. And not everything, it, it's very nice if you say, okay, I can start my own company, I can be very wealthy with this, so maybe something I should consider seriously. But it doesn't come so easy, this is what I said before. And 
There are many things that you will have to sacrifice for this marriage. A couple of years ago, I got divorced too, so I'm not sure if that has to do with uh, with the company, but for sure it will. It was one one part of the reasons. It's very strange in life. You start off with nothing, and you need a lot of money, but you don't have anything. Then, if you do well, you have a lot of money, and then you're old, but you can't spend it anymore. So, life is not fair. <coughs> Entrepreneurship is all about risks. Later on, we'll see how you can calculate, for example, hourly rates and how much profit you should incorporate in your company in order to have a successful company. <coughs> Many, this is something that I have learned. I don't want to offend anybody over here, but I have learned that for Bulgarians, it's quite difficult to, to deal with risks. Um, I know that one of my colleagues asked me that she wanted to, this was a woman, she wanted to, uh, to lend some money from the bank and then she wanted to invest it in shares or something like this and then she thought that she could make a huge, uh, huge profit on this. Huge profit goes along with huge risk. If there is no risk, there is no profit. If there is a high risk, there is a high profit. So if you want to gain money in this way, then you put your neck on the block quite seriously. Yeah? So if you want to have, let's say, 2 or 3 percent profit, you think that's enough, just buy obligations or put them in the bank, and then you will have your profit. If you want to have 10 or 20 percent profit, well, there's a big risk that you take, and there's a big risk that you will lose the money then also. <coughs> so lending money in order to, to, to make a big profit, this is what led to the whole financial crisis, of course. So, it's very risky business. Actually, entrepreneurship is something similar. Uh, are you going to lend a lot of money and you go into a very risky business? You can be in deep shit. Are you prepared to take this risk or are you going to rely on your own qualities and you don't loan money and you start with a small business and you make it grow, grow, grow? By the way, the last, the last uh, this is how I did it. So, after this has been said about entrepreneurship, are you going for the DSMJFY or the NJJG? <laughs> or are you going to be an entrepreneur too? Like I said, what's very important is that you find your passion. It should be itchy. You should want to get out of bed in order to, to start doing what you want to do. And it's very important that you make a plan. So now we get to the boring part. It was not boring enough? No, it was not. Now it's not boring. <coughs> plan. I have been reading a book. I'm not so much from management literature. I think if you use your common sense, then why do you need management literature? But one thing read me quite a lot a couple of years ago, Stephen Covey. Does anybody know Stephen Covey here in the room? No. No. Like I said, I'm not so into management literature, but this one, really, you, I advise you uh, to read it when you have the chance. It's also translated in Bulgarian, so it should not be so difficult to, uh, to put your hand on it and to read it. The, it's not only about entrepreneurship, it's also about your own life. How can you shape your things? How can you make a plan about your own life? What Kofi says are a few important things. He says much more. I cannot repeat everything from his, uh, from his book. But I took out the most important things, according to me. Listen to other people talking. <coughs> try to do this for the rest of the day or tomorrow. Just try to be focused on this thing. How many times do you hear something like, like this on the left side? I have to go to this presentation of this stupid Dutchman. Or <laughs> I'm very curious and I choose to go to this stupid, of still stupid presentation of still this stupid Dutchman. But if you see in how we communicate, you will see that many of the things that we say, and therefore many of the things that we think, fit in the left column, reactive, which means that we are all the time 
victims of the situation. Eh? It happens to us. We are not in control ourselves. The whole world is against us, and we have to fight, and we have to. And it's not like I choose to, or I prefer, or I want. Or Over there you put the blame at the other people. Eh? The teacher, the stupid teacher in school, he's the reason why I am so bored in these lessons. You can also turn it around. You can also say, no, I want to learn something, and I will be the one who decides on what's going to happen next in my life, in my study, in my entrepreneurship. Very important. I challenge you for the rest of the day, try to be focused and try to analyze if somebody says something to you or if you say something. Is it reactive or is it proactive? No need to say that I am a very big fan of the proactive side because that puts you in control, that makes you responsible for what's happening. You're not a victim anymore. And this is what you have to be if you are, if you want to be a entrepreneur. Second thing is that many people are very worried about the weather tomorrow, or about the stupid government that is deciding about pensions or something like that. There's no need to, to worry about it. You can't change it anyway. So who gives a shit? Important is that you focus on the things that you can change. The weather, you can't change it, and you will never be able to change it. So forget about it. Just focus on the small things. And your own surroundings, your own study, your own teachers. If you do this in a proactive way, people will see that you are very good, very successful, and then they will move more things. And you'll, you will see that your circle of things that you can influence, your circle of influence becomes bigger. Yeah, very important uh, lesson to learn here from Mr. Kovic. Another thing that he says is that it's very strange if we start building a house or if we start building a university, we sit down with an architect and we make drawings and then we do this up and down the draft version and then the until we have the final version, let's say after 50 steps. Every detail, every piece of wood, every piece of steel, everything has been thought over. And there was thought, can we use it a cheaper material? Can we use a better material? Can we, etc., etc. Yeah? Lots of thoughts goes in there. What do we do with our lives? Do you make a plan? Yeah. Do you define your goal? Yes. No. <laughs> Serious? Very good. That's what, especially what you have to do when you want to be an entrepreneur. But this is why I say that the book of Coffee is quite interesting, because it's not only about entrepreneurship, it's not only about management, it's about your whole life. Many people get out of bed every morning and say, well, I'm curious what today will happen. Many of the things that happen that day, you can decide what will happen. You can be in charge, you can be the driver of the car of your own life. So, for myself, I also made a personal mission statement, and I try to write down what's important to me. It's a very difficult process, by the way, but only the process itself is very valuable. Because at least you know afterwards what you are not keen on happening and what will happen to you. So everything is created twice, so why not design your own life? Uh, like I said, it's a very difficult process that you have to go through, but it is worthwhile to invest some time in this, especially as students. Where do you want to end? Do you want to be happy when you're, uh, what's the pension here, 65? Healthy, wealthy, 10 children, 3 wives, <laughs> whatever. Think about this, write it down. This is your goal. The trick that you can use in order to find what is important to you is to reverse what is happening in your life. Yeah? Okay, imagine you're in your coffin. They're digging a hole. They're putting you in there. Yeah? I will run out. The end. What do you want to happen? Do you want to have people around your grave saying, oh, he was <coughs> such a good man, such a good father? Do you think somebody will say, it's a shame that he didn't work a little bit harder. No. Who gives a shit? <laughs> eh? Work. 
It's most important that you have your priorities straight. What do you want? Do you want to be nobody around your grave? Everybody think, whoa, glad that he's gone. <laughs> no, I think that nobody wants this. Eh? So, if you start with the end in mind, your last day, how does it look? How does your last day look like? What do you want that people say about you? How do you want to be remembered? If you start in this way, it's much easier to write down what, how your life will look like and what you want to achieve. Does this have anything to do with entrepreneurship? Beat. That's why I think that the book of Stephen Covey is really something that you should read, and I really would like you to get us from the library or something and start reading. If we have our goal defined and we know where we are going, then it's easier to analyze what we are going to do every day. <coughs> Mr. Kofi makes this matrix, and on the left side on the axis you see important and not important. That means important is what brings you to your goal. Not important is all the rest of the stuff that happens around you. He has another uh, side of the matrix that's urgent and not urgent. Urgent, that's a time, something with time, yeah? Urgent needs to be done now or pretty soon. Not urgent, it can wait. If you see, uh, yeah, okay, you're students, but in working life, I can tell you from experience, lots of years of experience, is that many people are in square number three. All the time the telephone is ringing. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to. Huh? So that is reactive, not proactive. Most of the time these are colleagues, people that, that have a problem. And they call you and then they make it your problem. But if it doesn't bring you any further to your goal, why should you bother to pay any attention to it? Well, if you want to keep some friends, then maybe you should, should, still should do this. But, um, Lots of our time that we spend is in quadrant three. Quadrant four is something that we don't talk about, because if you are working in that quadrant, then you will be without a job pretty soon. So this is something that we don't do. Better would be to be in quadrant two. The best would be in quadrant one. That means that um, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. I mixed these last two up. Oh. Better would be quadrant one, but the best would be in quadrant two. Which means that you have a clear goal on where you're going. It doesn't have to be today, but you are working on it step by step, and you have a plan where to come to in the future. Okay, that was about Stephen Covey. Now we go back to make entrepreneurship, to make business plan. I present you um, five uh, paragraphs in a business plan. I said it was going to be boring. Well, here we go. Uh, this is a business plan that was uh, is based on a model from the Dutch Chamber of Commerce. And actually, this could be the content of your business plan. Yeah, so chapter one to five. And we will just go through all these chapters, but we'll do it quickly because of the time. First of all, uh, you see here the five, uh, the five chapters. Entrepreneur, describe yourself. Two, what are you going to do? In which markets are you going to sell your products? How do you want to organize it? And who's going to pay for all these ideas? Why in God's name do you need a business plan? Someone. Why do you need a business plan? <laughs> <laughs> you can read very quickly, so you read one of them. Come on! To not fail. Students here. Sorry? To not fail. To not fail. To not fail. Make the chance smaller to fail. Correct. Yeah. Anybody else? When, when you have an idea, 
when you go down to make a business plan, uh, you can come up with some improvements on, on your idea. Evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Maybe it's, it's a way to improve your idea. Very good. Evaluation. Yeah. It's if you don't write down what you want, then the chance is very big that tomorrow you forgot what you thought today. So it's very difficult then to evaluate. If you write down what you want today, then tomorrow you can say, mm, this is what I wrote down, this is what really happened, and then you can come to a conclusion. You can improve or you can decide to stop or whatever, but not writing down is uh, not so smart. Okay, organize your thoughts, keep focus. Yeah? It's important to read it, let's say, once per week and to say, okay, this is what we wanted. Are we going in the right direction or are we deviating? Entrepreneurs are, I'm sure that it was in one of the previous sheets, are optimistic people, which is very good. If there were no optimistic people, there were no businesses, for sure, because there are all kinds of risks that are coming to you, and if you are a pessimist, then you think, ooh, ooh. Uh, it's a big risk, I will not start my own company. So by definition, entrepreneurs are very optimistic. But you have to be careful not to be too optimistic. So if you write down your, your plans, you can read it, give it to somebody else, your professor or somebody else, and say, read it and please comment my, my ideas. And so that's possible if you write a business plan. Uh, evaluation is something that we already discussed. And yeah, the last one is a bit of a problem nowadays, after this financial crisis. That's negotiations with a bank. The first thing a bank will ask, what is your plan? And you say, well, I have a good computer, and I know how to write some programs, so I think I can make money with it. Can I please have one million, please? There's a big chance that they will say, no. Okay. What do you write down about yourself? Working experience, uh, colleague entrepreneur, one, two, three. One of the sheets that will come is that you can be considered as a risk for, especially in software branch, IT branch, for especially foreign companies or more professional clients. They want continu continuity in, the, in their products. So if you are in your bedroom and you have a computer and you want to program something, then um, there's a big chance that after one year and they want to have some maintenance of their system, that you found a job or you got bored and you do something differently, then this company thinks, well, I will not do business with such a guy or girl because there's a big chance that I will not be able to have some maintenance next year. So it's very good to have something like a network of colleagues around you. If you get sick, you just hired a very big assignment of 100,000 level and uh, you get sick and you can't program for two days and you're not gonna, or one week and you cannot make it to the deadline there's a big chance that you get in serious problems and serious trouble and it's very good that you have some colleagues around you and a network of, uh, of, uh, of people that can help you out in these situations especially with the homework sir? especially with the homework with the whole words, <laughs> yeah, 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 and to steal your clients. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the business itself. What's your idea? How are you going to operate as an entrepreneur? Are you going to start your own business? I have to warn you: if you start a one-person company, I think it will not be quite different in Bulgaria than it is in Holland. But one-person company, you are personal liable. So you have a very nice apartment or a very nice house or whatever, and you fuck up. The client will knock on your door and say, mm, can you pay me my money back? And then uh, if you can't, because you have been to a party and lots of beer and things like this, then uh, he will just lock your house, and then you have to explain to your wife or husband why your house is not yours anymore. Um, so a juridical entity is very uh, important to think about this. Yeah? What are the risks? Here we go again. This is all about risks. What risks are you willing to accept for yourself? But what risks are you willing to accept for your family? Company data, location, well, it's also not so important. Oh, this is about this juridical entity. Single person company. 
it's cheap, it's not so difficult to make, so these are the advantages. But the risks are very high if something goes wrong. So consider EOOD or OOD is an alternative with less risk. If you are going to work with partners, if you are getting married or maybe you are married, uh, everything is, this is very important in, um, in choosing a juridical entity because if you're going bankrupt and you are married without a contract, then your partner is automatically also bankrupt. So marrying with a contract could be very useful if you want to be an entrepreneur. Something to remember. The markets. Where are we going to do what? Actually, I'm still on life support. I just came to do a feasibility study. Uh, very important to, to try to, rec uh, to find your market. Right now, we have a very good idea in Holland. We want to make a site where we uh, want to earn money by uh, visitors that fill in their information, and then this data will be sold to, uh, for marketing purposes. Is that legal? Sorry? Is, is that legal? It's legal. Yeah. Of course, you have to follow some rules and regulations. There is a privacy law in Holland where you have to prove that you protect the data, and that's uh, and you have to ask the, the people who type that information. You will have to make them that, that they agree to. But there are ways, and if you make it attractive for a client, client a potential client, for example, to, to fill in their data because they get a voucher of uh, 30 lever to go and to use it in a. This is all about cars, so to use it in a car shop when you have a 30 lever discount on something that you buy. And people will be willing to type their information. So there is lots of information in this site. Uh, the idea is that you can, um, there's a big database with all kinds of uh, character characterization of cars. How long, how many seats, how much uh, leg space do you have, how is the height. There are many cars where I have a bit of a problem when I step in there. Uh, how many children can you put on the back, uh, on the back seat. All this data. So. The, the idea is that this site will uh, challenge people to fill in their personal data. How many children do you have? How big are they? Etc. Etc. And your own uh, sp specific things. And then, uh, what do you like? Do you like German cars or American cars or whatever? All this data, if you build such a database, becomes very valuable. The more information potential clients type, the more valuable such a contact will be. And if you sell this data, then sell. But it's very important to know if somebody will visit your site and will find their data. But how in God's name do you find out uh, how many people will visit your, uh, your site? So you have to do some analysis about what is your market, how many people visit similar sites, etc., etc., et Very important to think about who is your market and who can you reach your market. It's also very important for Okay, the marketing map mix, you know them probably the four P's. If you trans, uh, translate advertising as promotion, then you have four P's. This is how they are generally called. Product, price, promotion, place. Competitors. Well, that's bad news, especially in the IT branch. The problem is there are so many competitors, and that's, uh, so you have to, one of the next sheets will be what makes you special. Um, but looking at your competitors can be very useful. And how do they do it? Learn from the best. Try to learn from us. A bit arrogance is possible, isn't it? Yeah. What makes you different? As I just said, why in God's name should I go to you? Not to me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> really nah, today was not good. Didn't start very well today and now it is <laughs> like this. 
Uh, what makes you different? Very important to know what are your strong points and what are your weak points. For example, for IT firms, what are our strong points? We sell uh, Dutch quality for Bulgarian prices. That's quite a good marketing uh, instrument, what we have. And it was quite difficult to achieve this because if you start, if you keep on working like we did, like I did a couple of years ago with two, three guys and messing around with the programs that we had for my own company, then the quality was good enough, but it was always a very difficult process to reach the right quality. Many people had to test it, and then something different went wrong again, etc. Et et After now two years, roughly, working more seriously and have a good quality control system, it's much better now. So the quality that we can deliver, I can say, is perfect. At least Dutch quality, at least. But I think even better. And still we can do it over here in Bulgaria, so we, well, the guys have nice salaries, but okay, still it's lower than what we have in Holland, so that makes us price-wise quite competitive. So that, that is what makes us different. If you want to start your own company, it's important to think about what makes you different. Something very boring, administration and shit like that. How are you going to organize all of this? Administration, are you going to type all the invoices yourself or are you going to hire somebody to do this for you? Uh, general terms, very important, especially with liability. And write down how your liability will look like. Uh, I think most of it comes back, yeah. Administration, discussed this already. General terms, very important because if you write down that you make something but for the rest you're not liable, that's very good, of course. There's a big chance that the client will say, mm -hmm. I don't accept that, but okay. Yeah, so write down what are you liable for and what not. Insurances. In Holland, uh, I'm not completely sure how it is in Bulgaria, but I think it's different. But in Holland, it's, if you are working for a company, the company is liable to pay for your social insurances, for your pension, and for things like this. If you start your own company in Holland, then you have to take care of yourself. Um, which means that you have to think seriously about insurances. And I see lots of entrepreneurs in Holland that start a very small business, and they earn money, and oh, wow, wow, it's very interesting. I can, find, I can ask for a nice hourly rate. <coughs> Um, and they spend the money because they have the money in the bank. Not thinking about their pension, for example. So then they become 65 and then they don't have any pension anymore, nothing, because they didn't pay for it. So it's very good that you, if you start your own company, at least in Holland, that you insure yourself for pension. Um, other things, for example, you get sick, you cannot finish your, you cannot meet the deadline, you cannot finish your project, is the, you can be insured for this either by an insurance company or you will make something like a network of similar guys and girls around you that can help you. Uh, health insurance, pension, disability, etc. Laws and obligations. I think there are not so many laws and obligations in Bulgaria when you want to start an IT business. If you are working in healthcare, for example, that will be totally different, of course. But it's good to think about it. Um, personnel. Actually, when I started my own company, then, uh, that was in 1993, uh, so next February it will be 20 years ago that I started my own company. Um, after a few months, I had so much work that I hired my first employee. Looking back now, that was one of the most important decisions that I took without really thinking about it, actually. Um, why is it so important? It's be important because, first of all, when I was working alone, it was like, okay, big freedom, I can do whatever I want, and if I don't want to do it anymore, I just stop. If you have an employee, you're responsible not only for your own family, but I feel responsible then also for the families of the employees. 
So after that, I had lots of responsibility. For me, it was not freedom anymore. I could not say, okay, tomorrow I don't want to work as an entrepreneur anymore. I will stop. It was not possible. And this was actually something that I not really thought over. And looking back now, I can say, yeah, that was a very important moment. That is a very important moment that you will have to, a very important question that you will have to ask yourself. Do you want to have employees or do you want to keep on working alone? And if you, keep, if you want to have employees, then uh, it gives you lots of bullshit. They get sick, they don't want to work, they come too late. Uh, not in our case, but uh, there are situations where you have to be prepared for bad situations like this. I am a little bit puzzled because there should be another sheet <coughs> that I cannot find anymore. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe it comes with that. Fin finances. First of all, you need to decide on these things. We'll just go over them quickly. How much money do you need? IT business is low threshold type of business. If you have a company, internet connection, you're in business. That's a good thing. It's also a danger because that means that your neighbor also has money, has an internet connection, and will be in business also. And that's the reason why you have so many competitors. But it's something that we discussed already in the market subject. Uh, Long-term assets, short-term assets, uh, well, not so important. Very important is that it's nice to use leverage, how we call it. So if I 